Last week, we finished up book one of our story, showcasing our refit on the hard. Now that we've successfully splashed, we're on to book two of the Sailing Adrift Saga. This new phase will still contain some refit projects, but we hope to share some adventures with you in between. Some might think we're a little premature in launching here, but we've got dreams, and they're not gonna come true if we don't keep moving forward. There's always an excuse not to do something, and excuses are like assholes. They stink. Officially, people that own a boat that's in the water. We're officially boat people. Yeah, that's right. We're no longer, we're working our way from being boat posers to being true boat people. Yesterday, we put the boat in the water, but we didn't bring fenders or dock lines. <laughs> what idiots. The people at the arena have been very gracious and nice so far, and they took pity on us, gave us some dock lines and Some really old, keys. crappy, yeah. like, But it got us by until lines. I could get back home to get the actual How many cup holders are you gonna stuff? require here? Just one. What I wanted to say is, we are complete novices. I don't think we've hid that fact, but it might not be apparent because of all the work we've done, and I've become quite uh, experienced in a lot of different parts of boat building, but we know nothing about sailing, not a thing. Or like, marina life. Yeah. Yeah. So we get to the the dock, right? And uh, you know, like I want to share with people that may not sail at all and are just watching these videos kind of vicariously, our experience is completely. Mm -hmm. Like last night, we're tying dock lines and we're tying the fenders onto the boat. I don't know my knots yet. Of course, I just figurate the hell out of it and, until it's almost at full capacity and call it good for a little bit. But then I jumped on the internet and I watched a quick video of a kid that talked me how to like tie the proper cleat line. So that, that the way you do it is you have to go around the back and then loop it around once, twist and pull. So we're getting out of the boat. We have to now kind of uh, learn what it's like to have to travel again to the boat to work on it. Uh, we were on Friday and Saturday doing parts of jobs and then Monday rolls around and yep. we're like, bam, 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 okay. check, 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 finished. And that's what we hope to do out at the boat, but I'm sure there's gonna be a whole lot more challenges with being in a marina. So the mask goes up on Tuesday. Uh, today, Kelly's gonna focus on scrub-a-dubbing and organizing. I'm gonna focus on uh, electrical and getting the hatches and securing the boat. So that's kind of our big goals for today. We got our key. It's on a cool little float. Yeah, <laughs> Isn't that adorable? And it's a little thunder. Yeah. So we're, we're after it. We're going to the boat for the first day. Boat, floating boat owners. Today, my mission is to get the boat looking somewhat presentable. So I'm going to start off by scrubbing everything down with Dawn, working from the outside in. I think that's the best strategy. Since we've got into the marina, it is a little embarrassing how the outside looks. So I'm gonna work on that. And Chris is working on the hatches so we can get everything sealed up properly because we don't have anything covering this right now. And all the debris is falling into my engine room. So I have slapped together the boards right now in effort to keep things somewhat clean. And uh, it'd be nice to have some security too, because there's nothing preventing anyone from just coming in here and stealing all our crap. So there's that. Yeah, it needs a good scrubbings. It really does. Top down. Yeesh. I got the hatches going. Here is the forward hatch. This is a temporary, the old one. Here is the new, well-polished one. You can see a bit of black butyl gooing out of there. And it's got paper on the inside, that's why it looks a little terrible. But that'll go in that spot. That was my first attempt, it's cracked. But we've been using it as protector. And this will go in its place. We figured, you know, having giant open holes in the boat makes it less secure than if you can close them and then lock doors. So 
that's why we're working on the hatches first. This big boy goes on to the pilot house and it has three little pole guides. So I'm gonna peel the paper off, hook those up and clamp everything in place. Kelly, you missed a spot. Gosh, can't shoot me, I'm too far away. This is my little temporary setup because we're not in our official slip. Our official slip is uh, right between those two blue boats right there. That's our dinghy deflated sitting there. And then this is where we'll temporarily be until Tuesday when they lift the mast. So I've kind of appropriated the lift area because they don't use it on the weekends. Has my own little workstation for today and tomorrow probably. We also thought it'd be a good idea to make sure our dinghy inflates, because if the engine decides not to work, we're gonna need a tow to our slip. You move the hose back here. That's yourself a blower. There, now we have a new get us into our slip backup plan. Cool. Then we carried the dinghy to our slip. Hey, we're paying good money for this parking spot. Might as well use it. She floats, she floats. She bangs, she bangs. What's this boat called? Water. Why is it named that? I don't know, I didn't decide on that name. Who decided on the name? It's a perfect size for you. It's a Chris sized dinghy. All right, cast off. See you later. Bye. Got the dinghy blown up. Looks real good. Actually, this dinghy's not so bad. I was a little disappointed when we bought the boat and I found out that it was a soft bottom dinghy, but you now as far as dinghies go, it's a decent size. It's a decent brand. It's in decent shape. Seems to hold air, that's important. So I think we'll keep it. Ah, that's the boat. This is our background. It's got its own mossy charm. Our last sew this up, huh? Yeah, let's see if we can make it. It's a tight target. Oh, we've got to make it on the cleats? Yeah. How does that even work? I don't know. Close enough. Yeehaw! Okay. Lace me up, dude. We have secured the dinghy. Okay, show's over. Back to the hatch work. I'm working on prepping for that that beauty over there that we just made. Time to install the hatch after my day's worth of work. Okay. Actually, I custom built this, uh, gosh, about a year ago. Cool. I mean, it looks like it's gonna work. He just has to screw it down. Screw it in the track for this hatch. Yeah, I am. I have a question. Yeah. Do you, do you <laughs> need to get the plexiglass sure, okay. in before you do that? Sure, okay. okay. It's actually been a very long week. Can you tell? This is frustrating. You're not doing it. How are you frustrated? I'm hoping you do it, and I'm bent over in an awkward position. I just scraped my leg, and my beautiful job is falling apart, so I'm equally frustrated. How do you know how frustrated I am, Kelly? Maybe I'm not frustrated at all. Maybe you're more frustrated. I feel like you're a little frustrated because I saw the look on your face after you knocked your screws over. Right. And there's a camera in your face, so that makes it better. The butyl tape we were using just wasn't working out. So we removed all that gunk and now we're using Sikaflex. Time to call it a day. Let's actually lock up tonight. Let's we'll see if this works. <laughs> Not too long ago, Chris was scrambling to be ready to step the mast in timing with the launch. However, we ended up having some more time to really get set up properly, so we took advantage of that. Before we put the mast up, I just wanted to kind of go over all the little parts 
the things we had to do to get this thing ready because it was crunch time and it needed some things that we had lost like the spritter tips and things like that so we had to make some last minute crunch time decisions so let's check it out we got the step on and lubricated with some white lithium grease all these new sheaves and they work really great um, the electrical was all run and hanging out right here ready to be installed I uh, used some of that uh, self amalgamating tape and we ran it through uh, the boot here tape the hardware on for the things that we need to install when we put the mast up got all the running rigging or the standing rigging on the sides shrouds wired but we're gonna use the halyards fore and aft temporarily while we cut those to fit installed cleats and the winches this is the main halyard and the gray is the jib halyard here are the spreaders saw the spreader lights still need to shrink wrap and secure the wiring these are the new spreader tips. So I actually had to order these and then have them welded on. They're not gorgeous and I'm not happy about that, but um, they're relatively decent shape. They have a little clip, stainless steel clip that goes over the end here. So this is more of what we're gonna do for a permanent wiring. That self amalgamating tape around the electrical connection, lots of heat shrink. And here's our steaming light all the way up the top of the mast where we'll install the wind instrument. Here's where the top shroud connects wind instrument that we've installed on the top. We have the VHF antenna, the tri-light and anchor light. There's one more thing, what am I forgetting? Oh, here's where that wind instrument will connect. And then this is, we had to have these made. These are 90 degree angle bent bolts that go in and up. And then we cut them off to size and put some of this really cool tape. It's, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically Teflon tape. So nothing is, going to corrode and everything should be reduced in friction. So yeah, mask goes up tomorrow morning and we're all ready for it, kind of. Today the mask goes up. Well, after all that, we discovered the rigging was a little too long, better than being too short, but still, Looks like putting the mast wasn't in the cards today. So Chris is going to brush up on his trigonometry and we'll get back to you on this. Today we are on the water in the marina doing some work in the pilot house, getting all that bright work varnished up. It's about time. Chris is outside working on the rail. There he is, sweating. What a guy because we have a little bit of a celebration this weekend and we're trying to get everything somewhat dialed for that. Also, it's just good to have these things done. I will say things are a lot more complicated now with all the tools in the way again. So, got everything taped off. Gonna throw three coats of this clear satin varnish on here and uh, it should look pretty nice when we're all done. Looks real good. I just took a nap in the V-Birth. It was quite pleasant out here. We decided to take the benches off to reseal the penetrations coming through the deck, just to be on the safe side. It also gives us some more room to work while we reinstall the aft railing. Hi. Hi. Looks so bare. Yeah. I mean, you just took the benches right off. So I thought I should pull them off, drill them out, because they were just literally um, screwed into the deck by the last guy. And if there's one thing we know, it's that that last guy took a few shortcuts. So we're going to fill them with our best friend, thickened epoxy. Where you bet them? You want to give me a hand with the project, though? Sure. Would you help me with the rail? After Chris drilled the holes, we temporarily secured the railing with bolts, sans the epoxy step, just to have a little more safety for the purpose of our upcoming renaming ceremony. I basically sat on deck for the next several minutes, holding a tool and waiting for Chris to tighten his nuts. And then I watched him whack his pole. 
Well, that's it for this week. Tune in next time to see more of what Book 2 is all about. Hey you! Thanks for watching! If you like what you see and you want to keep following along, become a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button below. And special thanks to our patron crew. We really appreciate your support. These guys, these guys know about boats for sure. Mm -hmm. That's what they think about us. Yeah. Look at that Fleming. That is, that's Fleming right there. Yeah. Bah, yeah. Bah, as it like kind of like. Bah, bah, mm -hmm. bah. Are you watching my crotch off too? I can if you want. You already got me good. Free dinghy rides for the kids. Cause I like the little news. If you go to yeah. Saudi Arabia, diesel's like, like they pay you to take them gas because they have so much of it. That's not true, but it's really cheap. I can see your butt. It's weird to think, Kelly, that there are people out there that work like this and they're not at all aware of this going on. Yeah. We got a wedgie and a swirly yesterday. Yeah. That's a true love. See, see how it's like so tight? Well, bro. Just, that's an easy fix. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs>